and welcome back to the GT3 and that is the sweet sound of a devalved Sharkworks exhaust for those of you guys who might not have tuned in I pulled the valves on the exhaust which I had fitted uh, just because I wanted some of that audible delight to be unleashed when I wasn't going too quickly happy to report uh, on day-to-day -day driving it's fantastic this is the first sort of longer journey I've done since pulling the valves and there's not too much drone either so all in all it's worked out well anyway today is not about exhaust it is about cars and coffee so we're going to uh, a very special Aston Martin dealership called HWM and we're going to visit the lava collection of Zagato cars which is uh, conveniently owned by a friend of mine because we are arranging the collection and delivery of those cars to NVN London uh, for those of you guys that don't know yet I am uh, opening or launching a car care and paint protection film facility in London which is called NVN uh, and those will be some of the first cars to come through the door of that place which is opening in February and then on the theme of NVN uh, we're opening a beautiful lounge where uh, like-minded petrol heads can come and hang out while they're having uh, their car cared for and of course we want to immerse them in a wonderful experience which would obviously involve coffee so after we've been to the Aston Martin dealership we're hopping over into London and we are visiting La Marzocco to discuss and shop for some very posh coffee machines indeed <laughs> Okay, we have arrived. Now, I've only just found out, by the way, we're at HWM. Uh, HWM are the oldest Aston Martin dealership in the world. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So, I'm sure, uh, despite the fact that we're parked outside an Aston Martin dealership, we spotted two lovely red things over here. Come and check these out. These are significant to the channel. Uh, because we're going to be driving both of these cars in future videos to come. We've got a 599 GTO, which is going to be forming part of the Modern Classic series, which in uh, interest is exploding right now, so thank you to, to you guys. And then on the other side, we have a GT2 RS Wysark pack, no less, that unfortunately we're not going to have time to drive today, but both of these cars will be having a full review and feature on the channel soon. But I want to show you what's inside here, because this place has so much history, and it's a beautiful showroom, so let's go check out some spicy stuff. So we come to HWM uh, to have a look at the cars and talk about the logistics of getting all four of these over to NVN all in one go. But while we're here, I mean, this place is full of very special Zagatos. In fact, every car in here is very special. We've got a 600 here. But I want to show you some features on this car. So, from afar, the grill on this looks like it's just, I guess, silver plastic. But when you get down and close to it, this is milled from a single piece of aluminium. Now, the theme of this continues on the rear around the lights, so I'll go and check that out. And then for a spot of context, I shall tell you how much it costs. Look at this, here. So, once again, milled from a single piece of aluminium. In contrast, on the, the lava collection, obviously the black on this works perfectly with the theme, but these are the more standard finish. So these grills, all three, take 3,000 hours to machine and complete. For context, an Aston Martin 177 takes 3,000 hours in its entirety to build. So to tick the option to have those is £30,000 <laughs> on your Zagato, sir. I mean, if you're gonna create something special, why not put some special stuff on it, right? All right, it's time to leave HWM. We're gonna head into Shoreditch in a minute for some more cool machinery, but stay tuned. There's gonna be some really big projects coming with Aston. I mean, really big projects coming with Aston. You've seen the stuff I've been doing with Valkyrie. Um, it's about to ramp up big time. So all of this stuff that we're doing with Aston Martin here at HWM and all the stuff we're doing officially with Aston uh, is gonna yeah, blow up with some really special content. Anyway, uh, let's go and look at some really trick kit. We are finally visiting La Marzocco to kit out the MVN Lounge with the most beautiful coffee machines that I have had the pleasure of laying eyes on. We've come to their HQ here in London. We're going to go inside and check out the overlap between cars and coffee. Let's hit it. Alright guys, so welcome to La Marzocco home. 
Awesome. Yeah, this is our building. Kind of, yeah, it's awesome. It's like this is our kind of consumer-led floor. So we're on the first floor where people can come in, Joe Public can come in and test drive our home range machines as well. Okay. Because they're beauties and yeah. we've got such good feedback from people who've used them and purchased them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want to have a bit of a test drive yeah. before you actually make the purchase on a machine. So speaking of home, um, when you said home, I wasn't. You know, I was expecting something a bit more like. Like smaller, uh -huh. these don't look like a conventional home machine. Like it's a substantial thing. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. When you first see them, they're a bit like you know they yeah. can look a bit thick. But what we've done, or the team at the factory have done uh -huh. in Florence, they've made a machine that fits within a standard countertop. So as a spot of context for you guys, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, Joe here. So you guys might have seen Joe actually if you follow the journey when we went to Geeves and Hawks uh, a few months back. Uh, Joe very kindly showed us around the, what was that, that room called with all the Royal yeah, Regalia? Room, yeah. Archive room, ridiculous. Um, anyway, uh, Joe and I got on like a house on fire. Turns out that Joe's a, a petrol head and wanted to get involved in NVM. So here he is. But just as chance would have it, you have some experience as a little bit, yeah, yeah. As a so coffee you're used to expert. Expert, maybe yeah. not, um, kind of <laughs> in the way, yeah. But yeah. I mean, I used to, um, to teach people how when they started and how to make coffee and things like that. So. That was about four years ago, okay. so um, you know I've kind of got it in my in my mind locked away somewhere. Yeah. And so hopefully here, I can kind of. He's being modest when he walked in. Yeah. He was like, "So this pressure and this thing, what do you do with this?" I was like, "Wow, he's." The, he's and he actually guy. he actually is because yeah, yeah you saying about the principles that you understood around with extracting coffee. Yeah. That you want to look at a recipe. You want to think about your grind size, setting your grinder. It's about the water quality. It's about the temperature. If you can get your head around those key principles when making coffee at home or in a commercial environment, it makes the whole process a lot easier. Yeah. You know, coffee is a temperamental ingredient to work with at times, mm. but when you hit that sweet spot and you get the god shot, then it's the god shot. Yeah. yeah. Is that wow. an industry? Terminology. Uh, I like this one. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. yeah I can't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hashtagging that. Whenever, yeah. whenever he makes a good coffee, I'm gonna yeah. like, hashtag Godshot. Gotcha. <laughs> like, um, for us, when a client comes in, they've just bought this phenomenally beautiful car, yeah. and the, the process with their dealership has been fantastic. You know, yeah. they've had this wonderful like specking experience, and they're sitting in a wonderful showroom. What we didn't want for them was to then be passed on to us to have their paint protection film and it to kind of be a bit of a sort of you know normal warehouse. Yeah. Which is why we ended up going with like a thousand square meters <laughs> of tiles and we've gone to all this extent to build this lounge. And so every touch point and experience we wanted it to be to maintain the experience that they've had from yeah. day one. So this is why we're here to maintain that. And the lounge for us is a super important part, as is the coffee. And I think What's great about it is that the fact that even this is a home unit, you still maintain the same engineering that you've taken from your commercial mm -hmm. stuff, pack it up into something quite small. Hundred percent, yeah. I love that. Well, my mouth's watering talking about <laughs> coffee, so let's make one. Yeah, for sure. The... We'll come over to lovely baby blue that I've got okay. set up for us. Yeah, all right. Um, so, like I said, coffee can be a a little volatile ingredient to play with at times, yeah. but once you get it right and understand the variables, then it's all good. So here we've also got our grinder, so we okay. want to always ground fresh to order yeah. to get the best out of the coffee, especially if you're going to have this beautiful bit of premium kit in your house. There's no point in purchasing pre-ground coffee or uh -huh. using really low grade coffee. You want to get really nice coffee roaster, really yeah. good grinder. Okay. to make sure that everything is the best it can be. So, cool, let's make some coffee. Do you want something with milk? Do you want a flat white? Let's get something that looks long, nice and steamy so it looks beautiful for these guys. Perfect. <laughs> so another thing, always keeping equipment nice and clean. Uh -huh. Coffee can be really oily. The more you look after your stuff, keep it fresh, keep okay. it sparkling, your machine's going to last longer, your coffee is going to taste banging. I'm going to stick to a standard recipe, which is 18 grams worth of ground coffee out of here. Uh -huh. And for a basic recipe, we tend to double our dry dose and turn that into 36 grams worth of espresso. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Nothing like I know what it's talking about. <laughs> what what is this for? So this is the bit of this part here. Yeah. It's our porter filter. Porter filter. Porter filter, which is gonna go into our group head. You're tripping the weight of, of this. Yes. To make it zeroed every time. So you know you've got the option. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. only way in my porter filter, and then I tear it off and then dose my dose my coffee in there. Look at this, he's taking pictures out. That's it, get it bang on 18 yeah, grams. Yeah. And then you want to get your bed of coffee nice and flat and even, because yeah. we're talking about this nine bars worth of pressure coming over this compact 
bed of coffee. It is kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's getting it just right. It really is with the, with the espresso. So get it on. Yeah, nice bit of sweetness to it. You want a little bit of bitterness to it as well, but almost the way like dark chocolate would have. So what kind of it. pressure are you applying on that? One nice, nice firm, press. Yeah, one nice firm lean is okay. enough. I mean, look. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So then if I was, if I was... That would have been the best outtake ever, like <laughs> 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 I felt nice and secure knowing that yeah. it was, yeah, nice and flat bed of coffee, nicely compactly packed. But it's a good looking espresso. You want it to pour out like running honey. It's almost syrupy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you don't want it to, you don't want it to drip through too slowly. That's a sign that it's too oh, fine. It's so good. <laughs> Man, it smells good. If it comes gushing out too quickly, your grind size is too coarse, so you're going to end up with a really, again, under-extracted espresso. Too bitter and too slow, you end up with a really over-extracted, bitter espresso. We want it just in the middle, just right. So, yeah, always fresh, always really cold milk. Is there a, is there a, a preference or... In terms of getting the right consistency of milk, do you want it full fat? Uh, whole milk is the best. Whole milk is the best. Yeah, nice and creamy cup of coffee there. It's, uh, the, because of the higher fat content, you get a much more glossy milk that you can really play around with and do latte art and stuff yeah. with. If you can get the texture and the temperature right on your milk, then perfect. But everybody always wants to learn how to do the latte art. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't want to say, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how quick that process was? Yes. So essentially, we keep saying a domestic machine, you know, it's part of our domestic range, but this baby's got a commercial brain in it. So a lot of other home machines take a longer time to steam because they don't have that 1.5 bar pressure. Where with this machine, it's a, it is a commercial machine. So the first time home users could use it, they'd be really impressed with the fact it's like a six second time to steam like a 12 ounce milk yeah. pitcher. The milk dies under the espresso, and then if you stick it on the surface, that's where the foam starts mm. to come out. And that's where it sits on top. Yeah. Lift up, and it goes through it again. Right. You end up with like a... Um, <laughs> or you want to kind of try before you buy these machines, test drive them. Yeah. So we're able to do that in this new space. Uh, all anybody needs to do is just contact us. Seriously, I mean, we've only shown you like a percentage of our time here. If you're into coffee, it's Awesome. Yeah, mega experience. It's lovely yeah. to you know meet people who yeah, have the same kind of passion as us for equipment and for coffee. I'm just starting out, and already yeah. I'm you know I mean I've, I've only been here just over a few yeah. hours, and already I'm in a different coffee dimension. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That's> fantastic. <laughs> okay. Cheers, James. Cheers, Doug. Thank you. Busy day. On our way out of London, we've done Zagatos. They are now arranged for collection uh, later on, which we shall be sharing with you soon. And La Marzocco, what do you think about that? I, I'm really into it. I really didn't think you could go so in depth into coffee. Um, but I'm the kind of person that once I go into something, I, that's it. It's a whole new world, it's a whole new zone. So I'm really excited to delve further into coffee, particularly because that's going to be a big part of the culture of MVN. So watch this space. Epic installations coming soon. Anyway, we're rolling out now, out of London, back home for the next installment. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.